fearless fam welcome to another episode where we shall out on topics most like to keep in the dark this is your host chuby and today's elephant is a level three i hope you all been well i know i know it's only been like what two months three months already i hope you missed us uh yep uh, there's a little change look at my hair yes um but let's get to it as I mentioned before, we are still doing episodes just in a sporadic way. And if you have an organization or if you know someone um, who has an organization or something they would like to talk about, um, just make sure to reach out to us, DM us on Instagram at no filters, no fears, and let us know who you are, um, what your organization or what you want to talk about. Again, we're always open to working with anybody. You are, you guys know that, that we work, we, we just love sharing information and we love um, helping people as well. So if we could help in any way, just let us know and just, again, DM us. So thank you all for tuning in to this episode. I, I am very excited to be here to share this with you all. And as many as you know, I am an advocate for the unhoused and the youth and many other topics out there. The more information we share, the more we could help, I think. Today, we have a wonderful guest who's doing the work. I was able to connect with them via Instagram through a post someone else shared. And they are located in New York. So I'm very excited to hear all about it. Um, the organization is called Clear Path NYC. They're an independent volunteer run 501 nonprofit organization that helps the houseless at risk youth adults and those facing out of foster care to find the resources they need. They have a free to use portal that helps young people find, filter, and apply to programs designed to elevate them from a potential homelessness and build a better life. I am excited to welcome the founder of Clear Path NYC. I just want to say welcome to No Filters No Fears. Thank you so much for being here today. And listen, technology is one of our main issues in this podcast all the time, but it's okay, no worries. Um, if, you, if it's okay with you, um, if you would like to start so we could, you know, get, get this going, you know, if you're, if you're sad, if you're good to go yeah okay awesome um so yeah my name is Seth. um i'm the founder and executive director at clear path nyc um and clear path N at clear path nyc we want to revolutionize how youth and young adults access and experience um in finding essential resources across the city in a fashion that is very empowering um and so how do we do this we do this through our uh clear path nyc platform um our portal which is a one-stop shop to finding housing support mental wellness resources, bathrooms, job skill programs, financial tips, educational programs, and more. And so it's not only just a guide that follows you across the city, um, through any part of the city, but it also allows you to get connected to the resources, connected to the people, um, and connected to program coordinators within minutes directly on the platform. Um, so yeah, uh, yes. a little... Yeah, I wanted to know how it actually started. How far does Clear Path uh, actually go? Yeah, um, so uh, I started kind of down this route um, in college. Uh, so uh, I went to a business school actually, um, just due to financial reasons, I had got, gotten a scholarship there. Um, and one of the first things I did when I stepped on campus um, was looking into what did they have um, for social entrepreneurship. And so I found the program that was actually for sophomores at the time, but I you know, was able to be in the space uh, my freshman year. And I, you know, through there, they uh, actually accepted me to through a scholarship program for them, um, where they kind of funded my research. Um, and I was able to really look into the roots of homelessness in New York City, uh, which at the time was, you know, 2018, 2019. Um, you know, we had already reached um, heights of homelessness that was equal to the Great Depression. Um, and now, obviously, you know, after the pandemic um, and, you know, the city's response has gotten significantly worse. Um, but in my research, I found two things. Um, 
one how invisible the homeless youth population was in the city and what i mean by that is that um you know new york city comes out with counts um of the uh, houses population um every year um and you know i have a lot to say about those counts um but you know their ability to you know which you know they would go out to the city um they would you know with volunteers go out to different parts of the city um, and just count the people that they can find in the street, count the people that they can find in the subway, um, and then they would make an extrapolation. Um, for homeless youth, that, and youth and young adults, that isn't a really good method. Why? Because you can, there's a lot of definitions to what is determined as houses, right? I can be sleeping in my car and that I'm homeless, right? I could be staying at my friend's place um, and I, I'm homeless. Um, and so there's no accurate way the city has to actually count that population, nor and not only count that population, how do you, if you can, can't can find or count the population, how do you service them? Um, and so that's what was one of the things I was looking into. And then two, um, um, I was looking how much the foster care system and aging out of the foster care system contributed um, to the unhoused population in the city. And that was really um, based on, again, looking into the roots of um, homelessness, looking into what were the pipelines that were, you know, creating this ridiculous population. And so I was finding that, you know, um, when you age out of the foster care system, um, which is, you know, in New York City, that's 21. You are 21 and the city now says that you no longer have a right, we no longer deem it as a right to give you housing. We no longer deem it as a right to give you food access. We no longer deem it as a right to give you mental health care, uh, mental health care or health care in general. And we no longer see it as a right to provide you with educational resources. If you do that to any person, um, particularly a person that already has limited resources, li limited support systems, um, you know, you know, how else do you expect the results to happen? And so what are the results? You know, one in three young people nationally that each out of the foster care system um, are uh, expected to be homeless within four years. Um, and, you know, nationally again, right? One in three of young people that are experiencing homelessness in the entire country have come out of the foster care system. Um, and so when, you know, I was really looking, okay, if I want to have a, a significant impact on houselessness in New York City, I need to address youth and young adults, right? Because that is one of the biggest pipelines into homelessness. And so that started going down that route. I wanted to build something that was sustainable and lasting in community. Um, and so I was looking into access, right? So when you're 21 and you lose all of your support system, right? And you need to find a place to stay. What are you subject to? And this is what the rest of the city is subject to, right? Where you kind of have to be an expert in the essential resources in the city to actually know where to go. And, you know, majority of people aren't. So what does that mean? Like, you know, I've been on calls um, with, you know, numerous different people um, that have called my phone number or I found them on the street. And, you know, um, prior to, you know, really having a portal for ClearPath, um, and what does that look like? You know, you're, you, you can do this exercise right now. You can go on Google and you can type in, I need to find a place to stay in the city tonight for free. And, you know, Google does its job, which they think is a great job by sending you 2 million results, right? But, you know, you four hours later, you're on page six of Google um, because every other response is, you know, um, Airbnbs, hotels.com, um, you know, people's, um, you know, my guide to new york city and 12 steps right but right. you know you're not it's finding yeah you're not finding actual like resources and if you are finding resources you're you're getting hit with a call wall it's 7 p.m you're getting hit with a call wall for a nonprofit that has you know you know press eight different numbers to get to the right place and once you actually do get to the right place you get hit with a voicemail because it's 8 p.m right um and if you do go to the NYC DHS website and you try to find, you know, a temporary housing, again, you can go to their website right now. They just have a list of steps of going to 32nd Street um, and what you need to get there, um, which is, you know, kind of illogical that, you know, you're in Staten Island, you're in the Bronx, you're um, deep in Brooklyn or deep in Queens. You have to go all the way to Midtown in Manhattan for you to get intaken so that you can go to a nonprofit in your community or wherever. 
Um, and so that was kind of the basis uh, of, um, you know, Clear Path's beginning. And so, um, you know, I, I just started right, um, I started with an Excel sheet and I was like, I want to list out every single resource um, in New York City. Um, and I started on these four buckets, which was housing support, mental wellness, um, academic and professional development. Um, and yeah, I was, was working on this Excel sheet um, my junior year slash senior year of college. Um, and uh, excuse me, um, senior year, March of tw 2020 hit, we all got sent home. Um, you know, I had this incomplete Excel sheet um, and I was, you know, in Staten Island, which is where I grew up and, you know, everything closed down in the city, um, homeless shelters closed down, um, you know, every nonprofit had to close down their physical locations. And so I was just sitting there, you know, seeing, you know, how kind of desolate the city looked. Um, and I was looking at my Excel sheet and I was like, you know, I already know youth and young adults are already an invisible population. And now you've, now you physically can't touch them. So like, how are, how is the city, how is nonprofits, um, you know, tackling this issue? Um, and I kind of sat there and looked at my Excel sheet and it was like, you know, if I had worked, you know, 10 times harder to get where I was, um, where we are now, maybe we would, you know, have something that we can potentially help the city with. And so that kind of led me down to, you know, this can't be just me working on it. I you know, pulled in my friends um, from high school and elsewhere um, to work on this Excel sheet. And from there, I had kind of told them my vision for Clear Path, which was, you know, kind of, you know, oh, what the city should be providing. Um, being able to go to one place to find everything you need and not only finding those things, but being able to be in contact with them, you know, within minutes. It shouldn't be five hours, it shouldn't be six days, it should be within minutes. And um, yeah, that kind of started our journey. You're, you're right. No, when you look in, in the Google, you're not able to go to a straight like location. For example, I have worked with um, the homelessness, you know, the unhoused in, in California, which is, as you know, is the top, uh, the top uh, state of homelessness. I honestly did not know that NYC was this I mean, I knew, but not to the degree of, of how you're, you're saying. And and like you said, the foster system, um, 18 to 21, aging you out, and some don't even have a follow-up program to to once you get out. You know, they're just like, okay, you're in your own, you know? So I, that's why I wanted to do this interview with you because what you're doing, I believe, is, is beneficial to the, obviously, to the youth and the community, especially when, you know, um, there's so many resources out there. And I was looking at the, the website and it's straight to the point. You just go straight there, you click your, your location where you are or whatever, and it just gives you all the resources. Um, I do have a question for you. Um, was this always in the back of your mind as you were growing up, like about this, or you just started off writing college and you just noticed that, like the, the population and how the unhoused uh, was? Or how did that come about, the idea to actually um, start this um, organization? Because, you know, sometimes you you grow up with seeing or hearing certain things and then you decide to want to have a different life path how did that begin for you um yeah so the actual idea um came I, I was looking into a lot of the reports um that the mayor I, I was looking into the different solutions that the mayor's office were offering at the time and um, i think one of the key ones when i was starting my research was um uh the 2018 um rhy task force for the mayor's office so the mayor um basically had a third party organization kind of look uh, do a check um on it wasn't an organization it was a group of leaders um as well as like the youth action board um, um and a lot of individuals that were expert in the space kind of do an assessment of the city um, and not only look at, you know, look at the numbers, um, look at the, um, um, you know, the effectiveness of the programs that they were offering, um, but also provide recommendations. And this was happening in de Blasio's um, office for maybe three or four years. Um, and then the 2018 one, uh, 2018, 18 one 
um, their first recommendation was providing resources in a manner that youth and young adults um, access information. And so that was like a big ring bell, right? Because then I started looking at, you know, you go to any nonprofits websites and even the big nonprofits, they have really great, um, you know, they might have really great uh, uh, website pages, but they're not really, you know, on social media. Um, they're not, um, you know, they don't have even, you know, if you like not to be, point out, but like even Ali Forney Center, right? Um, really large institution, right? How do you how do you get access to resources? It's still calling a number. It's still going through a, a, a kind of a phone wall. Um, and then I started looking at the amount of nonprofits and organizations, right? Um, because outside of, you know, the city resources, there are also, you know, a lot of, you know, New York City has the um, highest amount of nonprofits in the country, 40,000 nonprofits. Um, that's also not including mutual aid groups. Um, you know, that's not also, you know, community organizations that that aren't, that don't have that 501c3 status. Um, and so it was kind of looking from that, okay, I see the issue now. We have all these organizations, all these nonprofits. It's not that we don't have all these resources. It's not that people don't care. I mean, um, at least people in our communities don't care. It's just that there is a disconnect from um, the organizations and how they market those resources, how they connect with um, uh, youth and young adults now, particularly as we're a more technology-based generation. And I think it's also archaic thinking. Um, I, I think a lot of people have this idea if you're homeless, you don't have a cell phone, right? Um, whereas, you know, that is a big different, it's a, it's a big um, misconception where, you know, I think nationally, like um, over 80% of um, houses people have cell phones. The problem is Wi-Fi. Um, and I knew, you know, in the pandemic, that was a big issue, for, particularly for youth and young adults even to go to school um, because the shelters didn't have Wi-Fi. Obviously, um, that has, you know, been a, a shift you know i think i think maybe at, in the city it's about 70 percent of shelters have wi-fi but if we're if we have the infrastructure for it um it doesn't make sense that we're not reaching them in those channels right um you know it, it shouldn't be um you know it, it shouldn't be that you have to go to a physical location and you know find out if they have a bed that's a big issue in the city um you know if uh you want to go find a place to stay, right? And you know that this nonprofit has beds. What happens? You have, particularly if a if it's a, a nonprofit that's popular, you have a hundred people out standing outside of the of the shelter um, at their you know um, their their time maybe six p.m. to get a bed. They have twenty beds. They know themselves that the majority of people outside are not getting inside, and they'll do a lottery system. And to get them inside, and then you know the rest of the people that don't get a bed. What is it? It's 8 p.m. It's 9 p.m. And they have nowhere else to go. They you know hedged all their bets on this place, and so I think it's it's very irresponsible, um, not only from a nonprofit perspective but in the city, um, to kind of have this operational inefficiency problem that isn't really a. I don't think ClearPath um, is a um, revolutionary idea. I think it's a, a revolutionary action, um, you know, uh, and so um, we're kind of putting, um, you know, if the city's not going to do it, you know, um, then we're putting it back into the community's hands. Because let's be honest, the community um, has always been the people that you know create solutions um, in in a, in a timely manner, um, and so yeah, I, I think that was the 2018 report um, was the me, I would say the eye opener that led me into the research into um, how many organizations we have in a city and, and, and nonprofit space and also thinking about mutual aid groups. Um, but then it also made me look at, okay, um, maybe there's a reason why, um, you know, nonprofits don't have, um, you know, aren't using technology. Maybe it's because, you know, houses people don't have cell phones do it looking into our research. Actually they do. Um, and then, so it was, it was, it's, it was my understanding that, okay, a lot of these organizations are underfunded. Um, and so, the, or they have lacking of capacity, um, particularly smaller organizations. And so maybe they don't have um, a youth and young adult on, on their team that they can pay for, um, that can work on social media, that can work on, you know, 
increasing search engine optimization to make sure that they're showing up on people's web pages. Um, that infrastructure isn't there. At least it has been something that has been significantly thought about. And so that's what kind of led me down the path of you know starting that Excel sheet. I truly agree with you that um, that there is a misconception that um, the unhoused don't have access to um, a cell phone or a computer even. And having access to Wi-Fi will lead them to, like you said, like something like ClearPath where they could find resources that could help them, you know? And I've seen that um, happen because um, as many as the, my followers know that I do a lot of um, advocacy work for um, the unhoused and having that access to locations, for example, where they're gonna be like, hey, there's gonna be a food truck down at this street at this time. You know, that is beneficial, obviously, for everybody in, involved. So in my area where I am, and it is beneficial to have the access to an app, like for example, like an organization like ClearPath, where we'll say, for example, there is going to be a food truck at this time and having access to the Wi-Fi, I believe helps everybody, you know, get, get somewhere, you know, have access. So like, I, like you were mentioning, that misconception that the unhoused don't have access to a phone or a computer, um, it's a stigma. We need to like, this is why talking to you right now is like uh, refreshing because we need to break that barrier to let people know that that is not the, the case. Yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, uh, I think it's very n n known. I don't know if it's known. I think people are, are um, aware of how much bias they have towards the houseless community. Um, and, I, and I think it's because people really think that they're so disconnected from the problem. Whereas I think, you know, three out of like three fourths of America and the, nationally um, are living paycheck to paycheck, meaning that it just takes one one bad thing to happen in their month and they can be losing lost housing, right? And so uh, yeah. if we're at a point where, you know, three out of four Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, then housing is a everyone problem. Homelessness is, um, is you know, a, it, it, we're so close to the problem that it doesn't, make sense for us um to kind of distance ourselves to you know look into uh, you know kind of um enable ourselves with um a lot of uh stereotypes um whereas you know you know most houses people you know we're you know it's 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 not um some something that they've done to themselves it's you know kind of the system it's the country um that's, that's failed another, them yeah. yeah that's another stigma too that um, uh, the unhoused are like, oh, I don't want to work or this or that. And your prime example of the youth, that's not the case. It just ate out of the system. It's not like they decided, oh, I'm not going to go get money and do, get a job or do any of that nature. No, it's just they ate out of the system. Some um, foster care system do not train them. And you know that well to actually do other paperwork and get themselves out into the world of the working class or whatever you want to name it. So that is another problem that we're having. Um, and we cannot distance ourselves, like you said, two wrong moves or one wrong move and you're yourself in that situation. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I think um, the foster care system, when you really look at it, is it's a really sad um, environment. And it, it, it says so much about our country where, you know, the most vulnerable population, children without parents, without support systems, the government says, okay, we're going to take them on, right? And if you look at the entire experience from, you know, the, I mean, even, you know, social workers removing children from families when they all they needed was really support all the way to, you know, um, you know the discrimination in the adoption system, um, the um, uh, discrimination in judges and family courts, um, the, uh, you know, commodification of a foster a person, a foster person um, through, the, you know, group homes and et cetera, and then all the way to, okay, now they're an adult um, and you have, you know, one, um, you know, one in four foster care 
people that have aged out becoming homeless, right? You know, think about you know, what if the government can't protect the most vulnerable population, what does that say about our society? Um, and the fact that, you know, we're just turning a blind eye to it. Um, you know, what the, what, you know, the social, I think the social contract is kind of a bit broken. Um, you know, and, you know, 3% of foster care youth that age out graduate college. You know, we're having these, you know, terrible numbers for a system created by the government, operated by the government, and these are the results and we're accepting it. Um, and yeah, and so um, I know ClearPath, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't see ClearPath at NYC as a, um, a overall solution. I, I honestly think it's a Band-Aid. I think it's a um, short-term solution um, to the problems that are of the um, impacts that it's having to people in the city. Um, however, I do think if, if it's an effective Band-Aid, um, and if we're able to do it properly, which the city and apparently a lot of organizations have tried in the past um, and haven't done so, if we're able to do it properly, um, we are going to be getting the information that the city has on um, the effectiveness of programs, um, um, you know, youth and young adults paths to getting resources as well as having impact with that information to tell organizations, hey, maybe you should change this process in terms of accepting um, uh, individuals into your program. Maybe the location or spot that you're in isn't the most effective place if you want to, you know, um, you know, administer mental health services. Um, you know, if you have this many beds and you're finding on a weekly to monthly basis that they're not being filled, um, maybe there's a better location, maybe there's a better process um, that you can do that with. And, you know, to un like understand that, you know, access to essential resources has always been a monopoly. Um, it's always been, a, the, the city has been the conduit to getting those resources. And so now we're kind of entering into a space where um, we are the small startup that's, you know, kind of blowing up everything um in the system around it um they're not used to that um but um if we do it again if we do it properly um we're going to have that same access to the information also we're going to have um deep relationships with service providers um and um you know and from from a service provider's perspective we are free marketing you know um the beyond beyond the platform is free um we are um you know we have an obligation um, to do marketing and to increase um, the awareness uh, to our users and people on our uh, in our following um, about the services they provide. Um, and then they're also entering this network of a bunch of other organizations that they may not even realize they're their neighbors um, that m may even um, start collaboration. Um, and so, um, you know, we are entering into a, an environment where we can do activities that only the government in the past has um, have access to do. And clearly, you know, the government isn't doing it properly. Their results are, are measle um, every single time and it's getting worse and it's getting dire. Um, so yeah, um, I think, you know, we're entering a space that in, um, from an outside perspective, may seem you know simple something small something you know n nothing that revolutionary but if we do it properly we're actually you know can really make a difference long term in the community outside of just being um a short-term uh, band-aid that makes sense oh it totally no it totally makes sense i mean hey at least it's a band-aid um yeah. Yeah, as you know before there was no resources of of this story it's not like someone like you like sitting there and actually thinking about all these numbers and how to actually make an organization different from any, every other organization. Like there's like um, everything's falling through the cracks, you know? So even if it's a band-aid, like you said, it's still, it's still a step forward to someone having a better life. You know, like you said, you provide um, shelters, right? Mental health services, food resources, and even academic support. All of these are just like stepping stones to them getting a better life. So either way, the band-aid, like you said, it still works, you know? 
is this, that extra step is is what they're needing. They just need somebody to be there for them, listen, and actually somebody who cares who wants to make a difference for the community. Absolutely, yeah. And um, you know, there's such an emotional process in terms of getting those resources now because it's so strenuous to get those resources um, while you're dealing with the circumstances of your current environment. Um, and so we really want to kind of um, be a you know, uh, you know, decrease the amount of emotional spin of, of stress on you um, by not. You know, not having to go to Google and go through 10 pages to find nothing or going, calling endless paywalls and go, getting voicemails and, you know, the, just going to one place where you can find all the resources in your area, um, filtering based off your you know, age, your um, location, your g gender orientation, um, if you have families, if you're veteran status, and then not only finding the resources that are most applicable to you, but then also being able to directly apply and speak to a, a program coordinator um, right on the platform. Yeah. Right, right. That, is, that is a, a relief because you're like, okay, I don't have to go through all of this and you have someone right there to talk to you and you could tell them exactly what you're looking for, what you're needing mm -hmm. and how long the help or wherever they could send you to get it. And that is a less um, stressful thing for them to worry about. And it may not help them in the long run, but at that moment, that's all they need, a peace of mind, like uh, to, for them to feel better. Because it's, like you said, they're facing homelessness. They might be hungry, tired. They don't, they're cold. I don't know the weather conditions. So having this can provide a sense of peace for that moment. So are you able to share more about um, the portal of um, Clear Path and, you know, share a little bit more how, um, you know, how you, nav how can people navigate it? I mean, what are the requirements for them to, you said it's free, but you know, to elaborate more on, on that. On the yeah, uh, so for um, anyone that wants to use the portal to find resources, um, you can go to clearpathnyc.org. That's the, that's our main page, but on the homepage, you just click go to the portal um, and you can sign up. All you need um to get on the platform is a name your email and a password that's that's all information that you, is necessary um when you go on there you can add it more information if you want to and we use that information to help find more, more resources related to you but it's nothing is required outside of an email and a password um so once you go onto the platform you're immediately hit with the um, interactive map um you can um uh, allow it to see your location. Um, you also don't have to do that again. Um, but if you do allow it to see your location, um, you will see a lot of resources in the area. Um, and you can on it, it operates similar to a Google page, um, a Google Maps page where you have on the top um, housing support. You have a, a wheel where you can filter on housing support, mental wellness, academic, professional development, bathrooms, um, and more. Um, and then on the sidebar, um, you can also filter based off your distance. So um, is it close enough that I can walk to it? Is it close enough that I need to take a train, can I bike to it, etc. cetera. Um, and then you can also filter on your age. So um, obviously our platform has been, uh, is uh, designed for youth and young adults. However, there are resources on our platform that is available to everyone, right? Um, and so any, any, you know, everyone needs to find a public bathroom when they're in the city. Um, and so um, you can also filter based off of your age um, and find resources, um, even if you're outside of like um, a young adult age range. Um, and then so um, once you're, you know, filter, you filter, you select the resources you wanted, um, a um, bar will come up and you can find, you know, find the description of the organization, um, their email, um, their phone number um, and the, the requirements um, to get into that program. Um, and if you feel like you fit that, those requirements, you click apply. Um, you can send a custom message if you want to. Um, and if you don't, we send um, all the information that you provided to us directly to um, the program coordinator um, who is on the other side of the portal. Um, and they can contact, go back and forth and contact and um, speak with that person. Now for a service provider um, to get on our platform, um, uh, a little bit of a process. Um, so we have a, uh, a database of every 
um, um, tax EIN for every like nonprofit um, in the city. Um, you can go through there. We already have descriptions from our prior portal of the of the program. You can go in there and claim one, um, and you can update those descriptions and requirements. Um, and um, one thing I will say for service providers, um, for every program that a service provider has, we want one email address, one program coordinator dedicated to that account um, so that we can, um, so we don't have individuals um, applying to multiple programs, only one organization, one person is dealing with that. Um, we want to make sure that we're increasing um, the response time for um, um, for these users and so that we want one person for each um, program and service. Um, and yeah, you can fill out your um, your description requirements. Um, you can add tags to help the, to help you, uh, users filter. Um, and then, yeah, once you put all that information in, um, if you're already in that database, you can kind of just go off to the races. If you aren't in that database, you can also, you know, just submit um, um, a business ID, um, like a business account ID. We just want to, you know, um, speak with you, uh, make sure your organization is doing the right work, um, a little bit of due diligence process. Okay. And so once you've been approved to get on the platform, um, and there are two views. Um, there is a view where, let's say you're not an in-person organization, maybe you don't, maybe you have online services or um, your application process is online. Um, you probably don't want people applying through the portal, you want them applying through your website. Um, you can still have, um, be on our portal um and you can track interest so let's say that you have um you're not getting that many applications on your website um but you can see on our platform that a lot of people are interested um then you you know that may lend itself to maybe your application process on your website is meticulous or um is not as easy as um it it can be so you can kind of track interest if you're an online person then the other side is reviewing applicants so that is if you are a organization that has a physical location or physical programs, um, then you can, when an individual applies on the map, they, you get a direct notification with the person's information, their um, message, and you can um, respond directly to them, accept and decline. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's the clear path process. Um, do, are there any, do you have any questions? I know I said a lot there. Well, to me, it was clear, but whoever is listening to this talk, um, I feel like it's straight to the point. I'm still going to put a video of your website and, you know, stating it so they can see it, you know, at least uh, the portal or something. But um, after the individual is signed up and everything, um, as you mentioned, they will be assigned to whatever they're particularly looking for, like to whichever provider is able to provide, obviously, with what they're looking for. Right, that will be how that works. Um, so, this is a not it's a nonprofit organization. Are you able to share um, uh, or get, uh, your funds or um, fundraising? Do you have any of anything currently going on that you want to share with um, the, the viewers? Anybody that's interested in donating right now? Yeah. Um, so we are a um, nonprofit. A fully nonprofit organization. Um, we have, you know, five board members and four staff, um, and all of us work. Um, I don't, I don't like saying that we work part time, but we all, we all have other jobs. Um, but um, and we want to kind of maintain. Um, you know, we've been able to get this far um, with, you know, kind of crowdfunding, um, and we kind of want to maintain that status so that we, we don't want to take funding from the city because we want. We want to work with the city. We don't want to work for the city. Um, and um, in order for us to do that, we need you know a lot of crowdfunding. We need donations from um, our communities, um, people that um, are not only invested in change, um, but um, you know want to see it in their city. Um, and so yeah, you can go to our, our website, clearpathnyc.org, um, and donate. You know, you know, donate five dollars, donate ten dollars, donate whatever your capacity to give. Um, um, I, I think um, what needs to change in the city is um, understanding our capacities. Um, I think people have a lot more capacities um, to do things, and we um, don't 
you know, really give it out, you know, and it doesn't have to be capacity for money. Um, if you don't have money, you have your time. If you don't have um, time, maybe you have people, you have network. Um, and so, yeah, um, I, I'm calling out to, you know, people that are listening. Um, and if you see the, check out our, our site, firstly, you know, if you see that this is something revolutionary, do you, if you see that this is something that can really impact our city, um, then, you know, either donate or reach out to us um, and let's collaborate, let's, you know, build together. Um, I want this organization to continually be something that is by young people for young people. Um, and um, uh, I really am excited on that. Uh, I want, you know, the people closest to the issues to be the ones that, um, the ones that are instituting them. And we can do that, um, but we need um, community support, we need crowdfunding. Um, and um, yeah, um, other things that has been exciting, um, you know, we have a lot of key partners in the movement. Um, one of our, our deep relationships that we have is uh, uh, Youth Alliance for Housing. Um, they are an organizing group, um, a, a very fierce, a fearless organizing group um, of young people that are trying to radically cha transform the housing system in New York City for youth and young adults. Um, for far too young, uh, for far too long, youth and young adults have been uh, had to experience the trauma of the housing system, being in leases, being in apartments with their family, but haven't been considered a protected tenant class in in those experiences. Meaning that they can't change their experiences. Um, and so we want to, um, you know, we and Yah want to change that experience. Um, and so we work with them a lot. Um, you know. Um, we um, want to be deeply in, in connection with the youth activists um, and youth organizers. Um, and so, so when we do, you know, have the ears of service providers and we do have the ears of the city, you know, they will be speaking out of us. Um, and so um, we're deeply connected with them. Um, you know, we're, I'm currently working on a partnership with Money Coach, um, who is Nia Chloe, um, and, you know, she does a lot of work with youth and young adults in terms of financial health, um, building your credit, you know, how to apply for FAFSA, how to deal with uh, student debt. Um, and so we are working on collaborations together um, um, that is forthcoming. Um, and yeah, um, there is a lot of action um, involvement um, um, and things are shaking up for Clear Path NYC. Um, and so, if you're interested in any any part of the movement, um, we uh, want to really um, embrace our youthfulness. You know, do things that um, you know you don't see the bigger nonprofits or the older nonprofits doing. You know, um, being outside in our community, you know, during parties, um, you know, really authentically connecting with our community. And so, if that interests you, um, please reach out. Yes. So I tip on that, I totally agree with you. It's not always about money. I always say, if you can donate, it's fine. At least your time, uh, commenting, retweeting, uh, whatever you do, uh, reposting, sharing, um, connecting. Um, this is why I, when you reach out to me, I was like, this is perfect because it, and I, I, I am in the community. I always was like, this is great. You know, may not be able to donate, but I'm like, there's a platform. Let's talk about it. Let's share it. Let's let the world know, you know, because it's one step, one thing, you know. And like I always say here, I know this up here is baby steps to lead you forward. You know, that's our thing. Like, and it does. Like, in, like you said, just letting anybody know. And if you are a person that is able to provide your um services you know reach out go to clear path you know reach out to them and let them know that you are able to provide your time in uh, whatever capacity that is um before we go would you like to let anybody else uh, know where they can reach you at besides clearpathnyc.org yeah so our website um you can also follow us on instagram at clearpathnyc um, LinkedIn as well, ClearPath NYC, and TikTok at ClearPath NYC. And you were mentioning, this is the organization you were mentioning, right? Youth Alliance for Housing, mm -hmm. right, yes. below, right? So yep. if you also want to check them out on Instagram, do so. And just always remember that community, um, when we get together, we can make a huge difference, you know, even if it's just talking, which is the first step. 
And again, like I, I, we say that people are uncomfortable, you know, and this is why people like to disassociate themselves from the issue. And this is why um, conversations like these and making it um, known that you are also part of the problem or you could be part of the solution. Mm-hmm. You know, the one is we are a community and we need to come together um, to at least make a difference somehow, you know. Uh, do you have any final words you want to say to the people watching? Yeah, um, I would say my final words are um, there is a lot of power in our communities. Um, uh, you know, we, our communities have been, you know, finding solutions, quick solutions, consistent solutions for a long time. Um, and at Clear Path NYC, we want to realize that power and expand it and um, emphasize it. And so um, check out our platform, um, you know, check out our website, check our Instagram, um, and let's help each other rise together. And again, I want to say thank you uh, so much for being here today and sharing your experience, your thoughts, and your expertise on this. Um, I wish you all the best. You can stay in touch uh, for whatever you need. I'm here. And just, uh, again, community. And I just want to say thank you for being here. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me.